Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some very, very interesting news because we actually do have a literal Harvard professor that's going to kind of go a little bit in depth and was interviewed on kind of explaining why the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, the Switch, even computers and pretty much cars, everything, phones, etc., have been so massively affected. Now, we've kind of covered this topic a decent bit up on the channel itself, but it's always kind of interesting to see someone who's more of an expert in the field being able to go be like, hey, this is exactly why, this is exactly what's going on, and kind of give their a little bit more in-depth advice when it comes to all of this. So uh, I went, kind of went through this article already and kind of explained and kind of like pre-read through some of the stuff. I'm going to try my best to highlight some of the best things that I think are just very, very important topics. And of course, when you have a literal Harvard professor, sometimes it's kind of nice just to go and sit down, listen, and kind of, I, I kind of, you know, try to understand exactly what's kind of going on. We have the rough idea on it, but it's always kind of nice to get a little bit more advancedness mixed on in. And of course, if any of you guys are brand new, I would love if you guys were to subscribe to the channel itself, pop on the notifications, subscribe for the brand new PlayStation 5 giveaway, Amazon links down below for the PS5 disc, digital console controller, Twitter and Twitch stream as well, link down below. And of course, please go and sign up for Weeble, deposit $100, you guys go get free stack and free money, Coinbase, you guys go buy $100 worth of any cryptocurrency, you guys go and get free Bitcoin, so always link down below, and of course, like the video and give your thoughts and comments as well. So we have this lovely, lovely face on over here, boys, with a big little interview over here from the uh, from the Verge, basically with Harvard professor Willie Sai. Which I'll show if I that right. Explains the ex essential problem betting cars, phones, computers, and more, and of course the PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X. So since the beginning of the pandemic, the demand for microchips has far exceeded supply, causing problems in every industry that relies on computers. And if you're a decoder listener, you know that in as in every every single industry. Right now, major automakers have unfinished cars sitting in parking lots waiting for chips to be installed. Game consoles like the PS5 and Xbox Series X are impossible to find. And even things like microwaves and refrigerators are being impacted because they contain simple controller chips. So as now over here is Dr. Willie Sai. He's a professor of management practices at Harvard Business School. He's an expert on chips and semiconductors, and he spent years working at companies like IBM, Silicon Graphics, and basically is an expert in supply chains too as well. So basically, yeah. So uh, they kind of have this little rough down over here too. So let's talk about this. So you and I could talk about many parts of the supply chain that have affected by the pandemic. Before the show, we were talking about toilet paper shortages, but I want to talk about something that's a little more near and dear to the verge, the ongoing chip shortage. It does not appear to be ending anytime soon and doesn't seem like anyone can forecast when it will actually end. So just take a step back for everyone, describe what the chip shortage is and what's going on. So when we were talking about chips, there's actually a huge range of different chips. Everything from the microprocessor chips that go into your notebook computers, the chips that go into your phone or chips that go into your PlayStation console, or even your TV set or your car or your refrigerator or what have you. Now, people tend to think, well, in my phone, I have a phone a clip chip or two. Well, actually, there's actually dozens upon dozens of chips within a phone. In a modern car, you might have 100 plus different chips for controlling a lot of different things, like the engine or other things on the dashboard, the console, the navigation system, and stuff like that. Even things with a power windows will have microprocessor chips. There are these little uh, controller chips uh, because it's cheaper to do them with chips than it is to do with mechanical linkages and stuff like that. So basically, a good example for that for the PlayStation is say for the power button, then say for like the power off button, then say for the power supply, then say for the actual GPU, then the CPU, then the fans and all that, then in the controller. So you have so many other various things put together that does make you know a little harder to actually go and find. And then basically, if you had to get 10 for every one console, it's a lot harder than if you just had to one piece, you know, for 10 million consoles. So basically when you go and see a, com a complex product like a car, you can consume on 100 plus controller chips and all kinds of other chips in that vehicle. What you're now faced with is I only need to be short one of those chips and then you just can't make the entire car. And that's really the problem. It's not a problem that the bulk of the chips are short. It's just that some of them are more so short. And those some of our varies depending on the time of day, the week, the month or whatever, and what other people are buying. So a big actually thing too, as well as more on like, hey, is like Apple going to launch their brand new iPhone, which they are. Is that going to affect a lot of things over here? Probably. We'll actually probably even see some articles floating around with that too as well. And then they could also maybe in fact impact maybe impact things like the PlayStation because guess what? Uh, Apple goes and has a very it's like the biggest company in the world pretty much. So compare that to Sony, they'd rather be sourcing to actual Apple mixed on in. So kind of going back on the the talk over here. So let's start even farther back. We talk about chips and it makes them feel like a commodity. 
There are obviously lots and lots of different kinds of chips and lots of di uh, different types of process nodes from different fabs and vendors. But at a basic level, how are chips made, where they come from, and what is the supply chain to go get a chip as well. So basically for this, there are really two parts, and that's there's the design part. The design part involves engineers laying out a circuit, which we have transistors, and it'll have lots of components connected in a particular way. The way that they'll do it these days, they'll work on a computer and they'll design the chip using a computer software, which gives you a file, which they can send to the manufacturer. Now that design can go from relatively simple designs, which these days are hundreds or thousands of transistors to some of the most complex ones, which could have up to 2 billion different types of transistors, which is nuts. So when you get all these more complex design aspects, there is also a supply chain associated with that, because if you're going to design a chip with 2 billion transistors, the likelihood of you getting every one of those connected to the right place is pretty much zero. <laughs> so a lot of people have this type of stuff, which is really, really hard. And these things are really, really just hard to develop. So with this, the actual manufacturing starts with the silicone wafer. And here, what you have is somebody who makes a single crystal silicone and a giant ingot. And then they slice into it. The most advanced are 300 million diameters or around 12 inch diameter wafers. And when they slice it, they polish those wafers in a perfect crystal. So basically, as you guys can probably go and see, they have a very, very in-depth process where the process has over 700 steps. You need to execute each step with a very high yield because if you had 99% yield for the first step and 99% for the second step, you would be like, wow, that's pretty good. But if you take a 99 yield percent through 700 steps, by the time you're done, you'll get nothing at the end, which is workable. So basically, you have to have an extremely high percentage to make sure everything's all good by every single thing. And while on top of that, every microprocessor can have up to 500 chips to as well. So a set, like it's crazy. So some of these things like a controller for a car, you guys are seeing have 4,000 chips, but at the end, every chip has to work. Every chip has to lock into place. And of course, you also have to go then compete with other different types of things to go and get in the first place. It's insane, boys. It's insane. And then even after all these insane amount of chips are all done, then they have to go and send those chips to another person to then go and assemble the circuit boards and then assemble, like basically go and assemble the actual final product. And then as well, it just is basically being sent to even then someone else, someone else to go and go through all this stuff. So basically, it can cross many different borders all different time. It kind of goes everywhere, which is insane to as well, which is nuts. So also on top of this too as well, so what you describe is an extremely complicated system with a lot of actual complicated technology embedded into it. They talk to a lot to consumer product CEOs on the show, they talk to computer, like they talk to software people and everything too as well, and everything goes back to the digital world. So now the next part too, of course, I'm sure you guys know is on the COVID side. So is it just that the factory stopped producing or more so making a decision to ramp up and then took a long time? Is it the consumer demand for the PS5 skyrocketed? What was going on with the consoles? So when COVID hit, a couple of things happened. Let's start with the auto industry because I think there's got a lot of attention with the chip shortage. So basically, the whole rough idea is the fact that they went really hard. Like, <laughs> vehicles are basically making a bajillion amount, but the numbers overall massively declined. They kind of went with everything. So we have the pandemic. The mechanic of a vehicle sales dropped to 82% in February and 46% in March. They had a delayed reaction in Europe, and then in the United States, in Europe, vehicle sales fell 46% in March and 80% in April. In the United States, they also kept on falling too as well on top of that. So a lot of these big automakers didn't want to go bankrupt. They didn't want, like, their sales are going down. No one's buying cars. They were trying to go conserve cash. They're laying off workers. So they're like, hey, let's go and stop buying all of this type of stuff. You know, we just, we just can't go and spend money on all these things because just no one's buying stuff. But then at the same time with working from home, they saw a huge spike in consumption. So basically you had like, you had a double whammy. Like as of right now, even used cars prices like, like skyrocketed, even new cars are doing insane. And then you also have all these things too with like, you know, notebooks and TVs, PS5s or whatever, even freezers on top of that too as well. And all these people just basically just did a lot of canceling orders and also maybe didn't necessarily overly order because they just don't think they would really need to go and have them, which I think maybe even Sony saw the same thing of being like, oh, this might be a little sketchy. We may have to worry about that too as well. Uh, but of course, as of now, we have confirmed that Sony's locked down in. As well, also the US also sanctioned numbers of companies like Huawei and other people too as well in summer 2020, putting massive orders on these factories because they want to stockpile chips, not knowing when they're going to get caught on off to as well. So basically, it's even a little mixture of China, too, on top of that. As well, there's also sanctions, too. You can't buy those shows, the trips, too, as well. And then basically, a lot of people are trying to go and stock up things because there is big sanctions mixed on in. 
So like a lot of people are still worried about deadlines. People are still worried about the actual threats and everything else. They're worried about production. They're worried about overproducting. Some people were kind of worried about how to spend the cash flow. These actual PlayStation 5 computers or like just the extra technical computers have like millions of different little small baby factories mixed on in. And of course, too, we also covered this news forever ago. Back in October 2020, there was also a Japanese semiconductor called Asaki Kasai Microsystems that also even had a factory fire. And they were also a specialist ship maker that made analog and, analog and digital uh, converters and stuff like that, which basically a lot of people were using a lot of major products too. And also even the cold weather shutdown in Texas also shut down the NXP factories too and the Samsung factory in Austin. And basically everything kind of went down. So they had to restart, takes a couple of months. So even then, it took them even months to get back in the groove. And there's also even more Japanese fires, too, as well, for even other micro... Like, it's just insane. Like, this is basically everything's been kind of going around literally everywhere. So, it's insane. It's literally, in all honesty, absolutely insane. So here's another big thing, too, is that do you think the split between the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, which people are struggling to purchase, and the car maker is unable to get the chips to complete their cars, are related? Uh, do they have other different things? So they're basically also saying you would have to look at individual product build materials and the specifics. You can't speak with authority, but what they do observe is that they have a tiering in the supply chain. So if you're an automaker, what they'll historically do is buy key subsidiaries from my tier one suppliers on top of that. And then they also have maybe other ones too as well. So if you have a bunch of companies that are like the Fab Light, so basically they have their own manufacturing, but the more advanced manufacturing, they outsource to foundries. So it's one of those things that like if they have their own connections and their own little small hubs, they can, but as well, sometimes there's just specialists that they have to go and focus on to as well. So it's all around a lot of stuff like this keeps on going on for a lot, lot longer. And I could sit here and make a 45 minute video. But one of the things too, as well, is I kind of want to talk on this. So let's go talk about the very fast little final things. We asked a lot of CEOs, when do you think the chip shortage will be over? It's always farther out than I want. And it's never certain. So even his take is going to be like, it's not going to be the tape breaks, the finish line, and there's a clear ending. Rather, it's going to be some sectors are going to get better sooner than others. I think if you're looking for when are we going to have to stop talking about this because the problem is not as severe, he's thinking more so in the middle of next year. And that's because maybe supply will rise to meet demand or maybe the demand will taper off. And I'd probably assume on the both, same with him combination, as more PS5s are made or Xboxes are made and more cars are kind of more tapering off, that means the prices will, and also scalpers too, all kind of go and calm on down. While at the same time, too, as well, uh, as all these kind of people kind of settle themselves on out, it kind of lets everything kind of slowly fizzle on out. It's not as uh, not as crazy. So if you guys want to give your thoughts and comments on this or you guys want to read into yourself and go into it, feel free to. But there was a lot of few things that even I didn't think about, too, when it came to all these PS5 and Xbox restocks. So it's always kind of nice to have a Harvard specialist go and be able to go and talk about it. So hope you guys all enjoyed the video and kind of my takes and their thoughts on it. I appreciate you guys all so much for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. Subscribe for the PS5 giveaway. Amazon links down below for the PS5 disc, digital console controller. Twitter and Twitch stream as well. Link down below. Sign up for Weeble. Deposit $100. You guys go get free stock and free money. Coinbase, you guys go buy $100 worth of any cryptocurrency. You guys go and get free Bitcoin. Those are always linked down below. Like the video, and I'll see you guys over the next one. Leave your comments and thoughts down below as well. Love you guys.